Oh, darling. Check the oven. No, 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 darling. Turkey day is over. Oh, yeah. And I just wanted to let you know I'm removing a row of cabinets in the kitchen. Okay. Wait, what? Yes, darling, you know, those cabinets that are so tall and imposing. And filled with things we need and use. Yes, those. You're removing those? Yes. Why? Because, darling, there is such a thing as too much storage. There is? Yes, darling. Okay. It's unattractive. Sure. And it invites hoarding. Oh, no. And I will not stand for hoarding, darling. Okay. Yes, darling, I'll wake you when I'm finished. Thanks. Also, I may rip out the sink, dishwasher, and microwave whilst I'm at it. Or I could just come and help. Oh, good, darling. Maybe we could move a wall. Nah, let's not move any walls. Why not, darling? I'm wearing my Googles. You are not wearing Googles, and you know that. Darling, I goggled my Googles. That is not what happened. You did not goggle a Google. Yes, I goggled my Googles, and the Amazons brought them. Just give me the sledgehammer. Well, all right, darling, if you insist. Hey, everyone. I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables storage. Everyone knows it's a sin to remove, right? But in a world where storage and design must cooperate pretty much equally, well, the answer may not always be so black and white. And so every once in a while, a furniture fabler may find herself grappling with one of the toughest questions. Protect every square inch of storage that she can or fire up her saw and trim the perceived fat. Oh, the drama, the stress. It's enough to keep a furniture nerd up at night. Ah, here's my insomnia causing friend now. This is about as plain and basic as you can get a probably vintage tall boy chest of six, yes, six drawers. My friend had seamed some action with screws probably for hanging things on one side, lots of water stains, a sticker left over, and lots and lots and lots of scars. Dings, scratches, dents, holes, this is what I refer to as chewed, and it is often an indication of a softer and or drier wood. The back of the piece was in good condition, which was actually a really good sign, but what's this? Hmm, definitely something going on with that bottom drawer. Before I did anything else, I decided to check it out and see what its deal was. Okay, it has, okay, it has clearly had the duct tape special repair job. And hey, no judgments here, by the way. You do what you gotta do, right? But we also have a cracked drawer bottom. I set that drawer aside and I took a look at the dresser without that drawer. The lowest pull bar was in great shape, this guy right here, but the one right above it was actually cracked a little bit. It's hard to see in this shot. So as I pondered what I wanted to do with this fellow, I began sanding, as I knew I had a lot of sanding ahead of me. But wait, you may be saying, what about the cleaning? If you've seen any of my other fables, you know I am a bit of an aggressive cleaner. I actually had already done a preliminary cleaning of this piece. So apologies if you enjoy seeing the scrub-a-dub-dub part of the process. I am using my Rotex sander to smooth down the fronts of each of the drawers and then my surf prep to handle those curved edges. Each drawer was sanded with a coarser grit, then a medium, and finally a 220 or fine grit. It's really important when you are sanding to not skip more than one grit level so that your finish has the best chance 
of having that nice, even look. But wow, okay, wow, here is the side, the side of this dresser. I don't even know what to say, especially here at the bottom. I mean, this is just really, really chewed. That's the only word I can come up with for it. So I was realizing as I was working with this piece that in addition to being quite soft, it had a distinct scent to it. And I began to feel pretty sure that it was cedar. I have worked with cedar lined trunks before, but I don't think I've ever come across a piece like this one that appeared to be all cedar. Cedar is relatively lightweight and it is a soft wood that along with this being an older and therefore drier piece, I think accounted for just how dented up it was. Okay, so after some thinking and mulling over about what to do and doing a poll over on Instagram, I decided the best course of action would be to remove that bottom sixth drawer. Like I said, there was a cracked bar I was worried about, but also the piece was just so blocky and it sitting directly on the floor just emphasized that blockiness. I had considered just adding feet to it as it was, but it was already such a tall piece. I didn't think that would look very good. So I did what I know is unthinkable to some. I fired up my circular saw and I trimmed off about 10 inches along the bottom sides and back of the dresser. All right, I put my new five drawer friend on its back and there you can see that cracked bar. I removed that and then put that bottom bar in its place where that cracked bar had been sitting. I needed to do a little repair because I had cracked a bit of that trim at the bottom during the demo phase. And then I also put back that center bracing bar into the new bottom. Then I grabbed some pine scraps I had and I cut them down to fit inside the bottom frame of the dresser. I glued and nailed them into the corners and while that was all drying, I sanded down those drawer bars. Then it was finally time to clean up the top again using my Rotex on the flat surface and my surf prep on those cool curved corners and edges. Okay, time to fill. 
Yes, even after all that sanding, there were quite a few holes and deep gouges that needed some wood filler. I wasn't 100% sure about my design at this point, so I tried to match my wood filler, but ended up failing pretty miserably at that. Here you can see how completely obvious those repairs were. This was definitely a disappointment. I took a break from filling so that I could install the foot mounts for the new feet our dresser was going to be getting. And then I went back to filling, this time trying a darker color. And yet again, it was still just not a great match. It kind of dried and went a little pinky when it dried. You'll be able to see here in just a second. Yep. Yep, there it is. It's just kind of not working. You can, of course, try to purchase wood filler according to your wood species, which is what I was trying to do here, but somehow it just did not jive, and I honestly don't know why. Sometimes that happens. So after a good, honest look at the very visible fills I had done, I decided I was going to need to break out whatever clever design skills I could. I gave the piece a wipe down to remove any dust and then I did a little bit of measuring. After working with this piece, I had realized it actually had a pretty cool design element after all. The drawers, of course, have no pulls because of these interesting bars with these inset reliefs, which of course just make space for your hand to pull the drawer open from the bottom. I decided I really wanted to highlight those bar inset details, and so I got out this cool tool. This is a Koala Ring Ruler 360. It's essentially an adjustable circle template for drawing circles of different sizes, but I thought I could use it here to help me create a painted curve to highlight the bars. So you can see I placed the Koala Ring along that curved inset detail, and I marked on the tool where the curve essentially started to straighten out. Then I scooted it down the four inches that I had already marked and I traced along it, creating a line for me to follow. Then I got out my paint. This is Silky Blue by Melange Paints. It's a medium dark blue with some rich gray undertones and I thought it would work really beautifully to complement these warm wood tones. To give myself maximum control, I used an artist brush to create those hand-painted curves. Once I had done my first coat on the drawer bars, I continued the paint up the rest of the front of the dresser, and then I decided to do the same curved treatment to that top bar, even though it of course didn't have a pull inset.
Then I added silky blue to the sides and the tops, doing three coats in all, including over the bars. By the way, this piece, as you can see, definitely has a strong grain. You can see it showing through the paint as I'm adding this third coat. It definitely won't be as conspicuous once it's dried, but you will of course be able to see it. And there are some folks who really don't care for that, seeing the wood grain under the paint. I am not one of those people. Every once in a while, I may decide to fill in and smooth over a wood grain, but honestly, most of the time, I don't because I actually like the look. Okay, time to address these drawer fronts. First, I got out my Rejuvenate Exact Match repair markers and I used the oak pen to dab over those little light dots of filler and it actually did a pretty good job. Then before I forgot and while my marker repairs dried, I taped off that bottom curve on the lowest bar and I gave it a clean straight line to match the bars above it. Okay, so originally I had really wanted to do something with asymmetry on the drawer fronts, but after trying this widening line in a lighter blue, I decided it just wasn't what I wanted for this piece. Kind of looks like a blue flashlight beam. <laughs> I thought and I thought about this friends and suddenly I had a vision. In my mind's eye, I saw two lines coming approximately two thirds of the way across the drawer front from either side horizontally. I taped off what would be the top one and I drew in a curved end to that line. Then I painted it in silky blue using my artist brush to round the end. I did that on all the drawer fronts, adding two coats, and then I pulled back the tape. I thought as I began sanding the five inch feet I had ordered from Amazon, I don't think I want to add the other line. Yes, you see, I had in fact found my asymmetry after all. But back to the feet. I knew whatever this wood was, was going to go very warm and dark once I conditioned it. So I decided to use this stain and poly in one step by Minwax in the shade American Chestnut to give those feet a warm brown stain. While those feet dried, I got ready to stencil the drawer sides. Because this wood was so porous and because I wanted to create a really crisp, clear stencil with no bleed through, I first added a layer of poly top coat to all the drawer sides. And then I used some Gorilla Glue spray adhesive on the back of the stencil. It has some paint on it already because I had done a sample to make sure it was what I wanted to use. Spray adhesive is temporary for about 10 to 20 minutes and using it along with sealing the wood is going to make a huge difference. You can see I'm also making sure to stipple the paint, meaning using an up and down motion as opposed to painting from side to side. I'm really doing everything I can to not challenge those stencil barriers and borders. And voila! Yay, looks good. 
Okay, time to screw in our feet. Even though I still hadn't treated the wood on the piece yet, I was pretty confident that the shade I had on the feet was going to work. Also, you know, I just like to live on the edge. <laughs> okay, let's give this cedar or whatever it is some love. This is hemp oil from Fusion Mineral Paint. You may have seen me use this in some other fables. I am definitely a fan of it. I'm going to use it all over the dresser. It will seal the paint and give it added protection as well as leave it with kind of a silky satiny sheen. And I'm going to condition and seal the exposed wood with it. This is really where hemp oil shines. The wood just drinks it up and the older and drier the wood, the darker it will tend to go. So we are going to see some dramatic color change here. This hemp oil is food grade. I can literally rub the extra into my skin if I wanted to. There's no mask required. PJ the dog thinks it smells good enough to eat even. Although I don't think that's a great idea for you, PJ. <laughs> wow, look at what is happening to these drawer fronts. Amazing. So after sitting for about 20 minutes, I came back and I wiped up all of the excess with a lint-free rag. Oops, gotta get those sides too. Okay, one more little detail. Let's go ahead and line this fellow's drawers, shall we? I found this blue and warm gold and somewhat asymmetric paper over on Amazon, and I measured and cut it to size before smoothing it into those drawers. Okay, do you remember our blocky blockhead friend? All dings and dents, and streaks and stains, with too much of a good thing, all hiding a hidden gem? Well, here he is now. Oh, hello, sir. A few inches shorter, and yet, somehow, a whole lot more. With a touch of geometric texture and pattern, and freshly smoothed edges, our hero is still not without scars. Actually, he kind of looks like he's been through a few rounds, but it only seems to have somehow added to his rugged good looks. 
His sharp blue suit really brings out his amber eyes. And his new shoes get him up off the floor, standing proud. If apparel oft proclaims the man, then I think our friend's perfectly tailored suit has him ready for a whole new chapter. So how much did this freshly tailored suit cost me? Well, the dresser, of course, was free. I'm gonna say about $5 worth of sanding and filling, another five bucks for the lumber that I used to help attach those new feet, $12 worth of paint. I'm gonna say two bucks for that stencil. It was part of an eight pack, but it's good to kind of amortize these costs in. Another $16 for wallpaper, 20 for the new feet, and say another $10 for frog tape, top coat, glue, that little bit of stain for the feet, bringing my total cost for this handsome fellow to $70. So what will he list for? Well, with his sophisticated style and still pretty impressive storage space, I think I could safely list him for $395. So what did you think? Were you a fan of his alterations or would you have repaired and retained that sixth drawer? Let me know your thoughts on our tall boy and make sure please to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more story infused furniture fun. Thanks so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables.